not waste his time anymore. We let's appreciate. Uh, let's get him on right now. Marcus Pollard, former Detroit Lion, former Indianapolis Colt, 13 seasons in the NFL, now the director of player development for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, and, and Marcus, thanks so much for the time. I said you guys have the greatest uh, collection of athletes in your family. <laughs> Bray, Braylon and uh, everybody, my goodness, what a, what a family. Marcus Pollard with us. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be on. Thank you guys for having me. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this since Braylon and I talked on like Tuesday. I've been amped up for this conversation. Oh, good. Man, I'm so excited to have you on, big bro, man. Like, yeah, Marcus means a lot to me. You know, he was that guy that I had in my corner. When I, the first time he ever came to see me play uh, it was my junior year, King High School. You know, he came way on the east side. I think we were playing Osborne or one of those schools. And then, you know, I went to see him play a Monday Night Football. He had me out there with the Colts, uh, and he scored a touchdown. And he did the, he did the Marcus. He, he, you know, he did that. But just an amazing individual man and you know we want to just dive right in Marcus you just want to just dive right in talk to us about uh Peyton and being in that huddle with a Peyton Manning who just got a gold jacket and you know you are number four all time in terms of the touchdowns pass to a receiver I believe you're four just talk to us about that winning culture and being in a huddle with the great the the, the sheriff talk to us about that Hey, the sheriff, first of all, I want to say, you know, my man Peyton, uh, what was it a, really an honor for me to be a part of his gold jacket ceremony uh, to get back out to Canton to see some of my old teammates. And, you know, Braylon, you know how it is when you haven't seen a guy in 10 years, like nothing's changed in 10 years. You pick up right where you left off. And um, it was great to see my teammates. It's great to be out there with him and Edron and Marvin Harrison and Tony Dunn and Bill Poley and just name a few who've gotten their man. gold jackets. But, um just to be in a huddle with Peyton, man, I, I can't even really articulate the importance of having somebody like him as a signal caller and a sheriff and, the, and as a guy that you want to have on your team because he's he's as advertised. Uh, he's the kind of guy that, you know, as a quarterback, I looked at him like, you're not going to beat me at nothing, not sprint, not lifting weights, not eating, not marbles, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. And Peyton's the kind of guy, I'm the quarterback, I'm the leader, I'm beating y'all at everything. Yeah. And so it's this great competition amongst ourselves to be great. And I think Peyton really pushed us over there to, to become a great program and great organization. Nice. Talking to Marcus Pollard now, Director of Player Development for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Of course, uh, former Lion and uh, former Indianapolis Colt was just in uh, in Canton when uh, Peyton Manning got his gold jacket. Marcus, I wanted to ask you, it just you know, you spent seven seasons with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis, and obviously he's one of the all-time greats to ever ever play. What made the Colts organization? What what we talk about the word culture, and, and I'm sure you're trying to change that culture down in Jacksonville right now. What is, what does that word mean when we talk about it? When we throw it around in professional sports or in college sports, and how different was that culture when you left Indianapolis and came to Detroit? Is that something you can feel uh, when you walk in the building? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I spent a lot of time talking to Nick Foles. He was here in Jacksonville for a while, and he often talked about culture and how culture was in Philly. Uh, and I can speak to directly the feeling that I felt when I went to work every day as an Indianapolis coach with the way they ran the program, with the way they had meals, the way the strength conditioning program was set up, the way you interacted with their coaches, the way you interacted with the front office. It just made it felt warm and engaging and fun to go to work. And then when I went to Detroit, it was a little bit different. I thought guys were a little bit cliquish. They hadn't had a whole lot of experience in winning. I come from a winning organization, and they making the playoffs, and guys really got along. They paid off one another. They enjoyed one another's company. It was a little bit different for me in Detroit, and I wasn't used to it. And so I went there with the intent to try and help change that culture, uh, to help guys understand what it means to be a champion, what it means to win. And some guys bought in, some guys didn't. And to me, that's some of the, some of the things that we're trying to get fixed here in, in Jacksonville with Coach Meyer. Is building that culture and what it looks like and to, to love one another, get along and to compete and then compete at the highest level. And uh, that's one of the things that we we'll hope we get turned around here in Jacksonville. Uh, you know, every, uh, obviously, you know, Ryan, Maz, myself, we want to get into Trevor Lawrence, uh, Tebow, and Urban Meyer down there in Jacksonville and that culture and what can potentially happen and what do you see so far. But I want to ask you a question on air because I believe you and I have talked about this before and you, you, you might already know where I'm going. Talk to me about why basketball players 
make amazing <laughs> tight ends. Because yourself, you're a basketball player out of Bradley. You look at Jimmy Graham, uh, Jimmy Graham's basketball player down there at University of Miami. You look at Detroit's own uh, Antonio, Antonio Gates. Gates. He went to Central High School, went to Kent State, played basketball, and now he's in the Hall. Of, well, he will be in the Hall of Fame. Talk to me yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, he's amazing, man. Just like yourself, man. Like, just talk to me about <laughs> how that basketball equates to the tight end position because you it's like you guys post up you know talk to me about that <laughs> you know i don't know Bray. that's a great question i've been asked that question a, a few times and i still don't never really have a great answer for you because i think for us as basketball players we just ball up sheer athleticism you know we can run jump we 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 can find holes it's like playing basketball in a zone playing basketball if you can find a hole in playing basketball you can find a hole in a zone uh, on the grass and there's a lot more space and so you get a lot more opportunity to get a little bit more freedom and flexibility versus zone. And, and then the other part I can speak to is, you know, you're playing man-to-man. -man. If a guy overplays you out to the three-point line, you back door him to go the other way. Yeah. To me, it's like, man, man, you find a way to get open. If yeah. you want the ball in basketball, you find a way to get open. To me, I attribute the same uh, attributes and characteristics to getting open, you know, on the grass and playing football. Marcus, so Tom, it's Tom Mazaway. I wanted to ask you about, uh, first of all, you're phenomenal – on uh, on the air uh i don't know how you're not on uh, a television show i know you you and your wife did pretty well on we did the yeah, show yeah, uh, yeah, we did i'm pretty sure you yes, did pretty well y'all go watch it if you haven't seen it go pick up a copy and go watch it the amazing race if 19. we could the plane <laughs> that was in 2011 uh but i want to ask you you're coaching you're 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 part of the football team still did you ever think of maybe just going into the broadcasting business? Because let's face it, man, you you have it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I used to do a, a, a TV show uh, there in Indy for several years. Uh, it was called The Four Horsemen, and we used to do a, a weekly show post game. And I enjoy it, man. I enjoy TV. I do a weekly radio show here for our U Football, I'm part of U Football department here, and I do a weekly show where we announce the Coach of the Week and Player of the Week. So I've always been around TV and radio. Uh, my wife is always telling me I have a face for TV and a voice for radio, so I got both. Got both. I got both, I guess. She, yep. so, um, she might be lying. But if anybody's not, listening, she, she might be. She this. might be lying, big bro. <laughs> <laughs> she might be lying. Hey, Marcus, yeah. I'm I, I'm curious um, because the 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 situation you guys are in in Jacksonville right now is not dissimilar to to one that we're in here in Detroit. First year head coach. Uh, lots of losing uh, of late in the organization. Uh, you, you know, culture change, a quarterback change, albeit. Uh, you but know, have you, a proven quarterback. We, we have a, a proven quarterback here in Detroit, led his team to a Super Bowl, but still a younger guy, first yeah. year with a new organization, yeah. Trevor Lawrence, obviously, uh, in Jacksonville. How quickly can these turnarounds happen in the NFL with first-year staffs? And, and, and what are you trying to do there in Jacksonville? And how quickly do you think it tangibly can change? Because a lot of us here in Detroit are hoping that it happens quickly, as, as is the case there in Jacksonville. Yeah, so I think the thing that, you know, I, I spent some time playing with Dan Campbell there in Detroit as a Lion. And Dan is that. He's a Lion. A guy super competitive, super smart. And I'm certain he did a really good job of uh, putting together staff, uh, both scheme offensively, defensively, and special teams. But to me, the one thing that I can compare, spend some time with, with Dan Campbell and Coach Meyer, both are fierce competitors, and they want guys on the grass that are fierce competitors. I'm not saying that guys aren't, but when you are reminded every day this is a standard, to me you start to build that culture. And I think Dan can turn around uh, to say how long, you know, it's it's just a matter of time. It, it comes back to that culture where you're talking about guys enjoy one another's company, enjoy being around each other. They're having fun while they're playing. It's not a job. It's not oh man, I I don't want to go to work today. You know, guys that enjoy playing football and enjoy being around each other with a good quarterback and a good head coach, it can turn around really fast. Marcus Pollard joining us here on Woodward Sports Network. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazzaro. We're going to take a 30-second pause. When we come back, I want to ask about your son on his way to the University of Michigan. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at Braylon, Look at Braylon gang, smiling. Gang. We'll, we'll be right back. 30 seconds. Welcome to the Call Sam Chopper Shop, where you can win a custom-built chopper while helping our veterans at the same time. Watch as the Bad Pig Custom Team turns this bike into a one-of-a-kind classic chopper. And when it's finished, we'll be donating the bike to Volunteers of America Michigan to raffle off in support of our vets. A great cause to give back to those who've given so much. Watch for Call Sam Chopper Shop episodes on our social media channels 
and get your raffle ticket today at callsam.com backslash chopper shot. Here we go, Woodward Sports, the bottom line. We're coming back to you with my big bro, Marcus Pollard, man. Uh, this guy is amazing. I remember when him and my sister got married. Uh, it was my senior year, uh, 2001. And he wanted me to drive the, the wedding gift, which was a Porsche uh, Carrera. He wanted me to drive the Porsche and hide it. I was like... Uh, I don't know how to drive a stick. <laughs> so, I said, I don't know how to drive. I really appreciate that and the trust, but I don't know how to drive a Come stick. Come on, Brad. He, he was like, all right, well, take my truck. I said, now that Denali or that Yukon, I know how to drive that thing. Uh, it's but, fantastic. See, I, yeah. I was forecasting early on. What I was forecasting is when I saw you playing high school, Bray, and knew you were going to Michigan, I said, it's only a matter of time. So if he crashed this Porsche, <laughs> He can afford to buy I'll me be, another him. I'll be able to pay it back. And shout out to Marcus. <laughs> Marcus and my sister, Mike, they were on the stage when I got drafted in 2005. I think we broke the record. And that's why they don't let family come in like that. <laughs> we had about 40 people on stage. Marcus, I got to ask you a question. Hey, it takes man. a village, man. Like, you know, you're Alabama, born and raised. Like, you know, you're, 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 you're Alabama through and through. Uh, your son, my nephew, Michael Pollard, like he's an amazing athlete. And he's getting scholarship offers from all over the country and in, in the SEC, in the Pac-12, in the Big Ten. Um, how did you let? And let me, you know what? That's actually a, a bad way to phrase it. What made Michael want to go to Michigan? Want to go to Big Blue? And let me finish, because they're not in a particularly great space compared to some of the other institutions where scholarships were on the table. What made Micah say, I don't care about that. I'm going up there to Ann Arbor. What was that about for you and uh, your son and my nephew? Yeah, uh, another great question, bro. I think for Micah, it, it had everything to do with Coach Harbaugh uh, and the relationship that he's established with Coach Harbaugh. I think secondly is the relationship he's built with the defensive staff. Uh, having the opportunity to look at our JAG uh, defense and that same system that they're running at Michigan, the same one we're running here, and to see the opportunity for linebackers that sometimes have six linebackers on the field at the same time, to me, was gratifying as a dad to, to know that my son's going to get an opportunity early. And so between the, the academics, I said it's ABC, it's academic ball and coaches, and, I, and Michigan checked all three boxes, and then the fact that his uncle Braylon went there, uh -oh. uh, and the success and the success that you had there, yeah. to me, it spoke volumes to Micah and helping him make that decision. Uh, that's actually amazing, man. I, I watch what Micah does. I watch his position. Like, I told you on the phone, like, obviously he's trying to play the outside linebacker position or that backer position and kind of reverberate or however they want to plug him in. But it just reminds me of what they did with Jabril Peppers, what they did with Kalik Hudson. That Viper position at Michigan, I think he he's going to be amazing, man. And I don't say that because he's my nephew. I say that because that position suits him well, and I think they're going to do some good things. Go ahead, uh, Ryan, jump. Maz has something. I do. I do. Jump Marcus, in, uh, I wanted to ask you about Jacksonville. You got Urban Meyer <laughs> there, and you had Tim Tebow there. I just want to know how the whole thing went down and where it's at now. I told Marcus that Tebow got cut. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he didn't even know. You need a hard knocks, <laughs> My Marcus. Man, I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. You need I'm hard sorry. knocks. Yeah, Bray, Bray told me, hey, man, you know, Tebow got cut. I said, what? You look at cut. I don't even know. I had to check my email to find out. Okay. But um, you know, when I tell you Tim Tebow, and it, it, he's a great individual. When I say a great human being, Tim, is that. He, he's a work hard guy, try hard guy, great effort. He's going to do the right thing, say the right things, not just as a front, but that's who he is. Uh, and when we were out in just helmets and, and jerseys, I was like, okay, Tim, he may have a chance. I hate to count him out, but. You know, this guy got a chance, but then when we put the shoulder pads on, it was a little bit different for him. For a guy that's, you know, 33, 34 years old, coming in to try and learn a new position, the deck was stacked against oh, him. Oh, we but saw the video. I never thought that he didn't have an Never had an opportunity to, to really get a chance to get out there and get in the mix in game situations. Talking to Marcus Pollard now, uh, long-time career. Video. 
What's that? We saw that video. Absolutely. Longtime uh, NFL tight end, Colts and Lions. Uh, we love him here in Detroit. And, of course, now the director of player development for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Marcus, if I could go back to college football uh, for a second. I, I'm For a guy like me who has never recruited, <laughs> but I love the game. You were the man at Gross Point South. I was the man. I had a 5'8", 40, though, my senior year. Why uh, Marcus, does it go up a tenth of, uh, you, like six tenths of a second oh, every day? Man, I'm telling you. It was 5'2", yesterday. I'm I'm telling you. The combine should have been around back I'm then. I'm serious. No, it shouldn't have. It was great. But but that recruiting process and everything that's going on in college football right now with, you know, expansion and, and, and name image, image like this, what, what was the recruiting process like for you? And, and how did uh, ultimately uh, your son Micah lands with Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines? How, how, how would you characterize their recruitment compared to uh, other uh, big time universities that I know w- was after Micah? Yeah, you know, the, Micah had uh, almost 40 offers uh, from everywhere, like Braylon said, across the country. Um, I, I think the, the way that Jim and the staff recruited Micah, they didn't just recruit Micah, they recruited us as well. And his mom and Armani, we just appreciated that because some university was a call and they only have a conversation with him. And so the schools that recruited us, um, to me, got an advantage because now I got an ear to talk to Mike about what to look for. And when when we talked about it, Michigan checked all the boxes. He's got family nearby. Uncle Braylon went there. They got a great defense. They got a head coach that's done it before in other places and done so well there in Michigan. But, you know, when we talked to him, I like, you know, the change in staff getting new staff, getting new blood in the system. Um, to me, I'm just excited about where Michigan can, Michigan can go. And I've actually been doing some recruiting myself just to get more guys to the big group. <laughs> I love I it. Check you out. Please, as a Michigan alum, please, Marcus. Hey, please. Uh, <laughs> big bro, I was going to ask you a very hey. I was going to ask you a very easy question. I, everybody wants to know about the number 1 pick overall and how does he look down there in Jacksonville and do you see you know something that's going to be special but you know what I don't want to do that we can watch preseason we can figure it out I want to ask you about yourself what do you miss Marcus about playing in that league man like what what is it that you miss about you know uh being in the NFL and you know I don't want to go too far because I might ruin it what do you miss about you know like being in the league I think the thing that I miss the most, I'm still kind of getting it here with our players, although I'm much older than them. But that locker room, man, there's That's no it. price. You can, can't it. put a price on a locker room. That the feeling that you get with guys and cracking jokes and, yeah. and laugh and calling somebody ugly. They <laughs> thank you, Brad. <laughs> a lot of ugly guys. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And I ask you that, you know, and we've talked about this before, and I knew what you were going to say, and I'm the same exact way. People ask me that. You know, Ryan's asked me. Other people ask me. I Curious. I mean, I don't miss Monday Night Football. Like, actually, if if you are in the know, we we as players hate Monday Night Football. It takes too long to get to. It's a long night. Then it's a short week. I don't miss Monday Night Football. I don't miss catching touchdowns. I miss that locker room. Yeah. I miss, like, you know, oh, we're not doing, you know, quick Monday. Hey, fellas, you know, if you're young, if you're not married, you know, you don't have kids. Man, what, what, what y'all doing on Monday? What, what y'all want to do tonight? Let's go to the restaurant. Let's go and figure out where it goes with that. Practice when we all feel terrible. Did you guys watch the game together? Uh, who? The Monday night game, if you, when you weren't playing it? No, if, did, did you guys get together uh, and watch it as a team? Uh, maybe. Like, sometimes, sometimes, like, in New York, they used to have, like, Monday night watch parties. So yeah. it was like it started off as the watch party, but it led into, you know, Tom Foolery. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Foolery. Tom Foolery. Tom Foolery. <laughs> hey, Marcus, I wanted to ask you, how did you pick Bradley? They didn't have a football team. You go and you're a Bradley Brave basketball player, but uh, did you ever want to play football going there? Uh, no, I never thought about playing football at Bradley. You know, like Micah, and he'll remind me, you asked a question about the recruiting process of Micah, and he's quick to remind me that you only had like two offers coming out. I had like 40. And so he, <laughs> he's always <laughs> about A little bit of shade right there. Yeah, a little shade, a little, a little shade. shade. But um, Mr. Bradley was um, it was the only only team in town. Um, really had a stadium that sit you know twelve thousand people, and twelve thousand people came to games. That's a lot. And had a great a great education, and uh, so I just enjoyed it, man. They and they recruited me the hardest. I felt like they wanted me the most, um, and so it was just a good fit for me. I, you know, I can say that none of them passed it. Uh, it was probably divine intervention for me because I really didn't get along with the head coach at the time. I wanted to transfer, but some of my teammates convinced me to stay. 
And I think me leaving and transitioning into football, I was like the, the water boy. Uh, <laughs> Bobby coach. Boucher. Yeah, I was Bobby Boucher. You can't play football. Nobody's ever done that before. Nobody's ever right. came from the to and making a career plan in the NFL. You need to go get a job. And I was like, what? Bro, you can't tell me what I can't do. Yeah. So it was my tackling fuel um, to push myself to be an elite you know, tight end. And so it really came back to him telling me that I couldn't do it. And I always kept that in my head and showed him that I could Meanwhile, Tony Gonzalez was doing that exact same thing. Hey, uh, Marcus, you know I would be remiss and I would catch hell if I didn't tell my uh, my goddaughter, Eris, hey, sweetie, how you doing? And I got to tell Big Sis, thank you for letting your uh, your husband do my show. Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I, I I love you too, Big Sis. For I, had, li- I, had, li- to li- I had, <laughs> had, had to save my own skin. I had to throw that out there. Marcus, I, I got I got one, two quick questions for you. In, in, Urban in, Meyer? In, in, yes. <laughs> That's exactly where Man. I'm going to go with it. According yeah. to you. Well, uh, Marcus, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. If, if, um, so my second year in broadcasting television, I worked in Toledo, and one of the schools we covered was Bowling, Bowling Green, Green when State Urban University. Meyer was the head coach down there. And I didn't know who this guy was. So I walk up to him and I'm like, Coach Mayer? <laughs> you know, it's M-E-Y-E-R. Boy, did he light me up, man, in front of everybody. But, but, but you know what? He taught you a lesson. You, you know what? He taught me a lesson, and I, he made me better. Yeah. He made me study who I was going to interview. You have one job. Yep, he made me study who I was going to interview. I try never to get anybody's name wrong. Yeah. And, and it kind of goes along with, with my next question for you is, Urban Meyer is one of the greatest college head coaches of all time. Uh, stack him up with, with whoever you want. Nick Saban, obviously, probably number one. And then I'd go as far to say that, that Urban Meyer is number two on that list. Three. How, oh, well, however you want to the put bear. it. The bear. The bear, fine, right. sure. Um, but uh, what is that transition like for him, do you think, from college to the NFL? And the second part of that question is – what are your aspirations? Do you want to be a head coach in the NFL? Is that something that you'd like to do as a career path? Uh, so let me answer the first one first. Um, coach Meyer, he, uh, I can understand why he's had success everywhere he's been. Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, and at Ohio State. Because he, he has a blueprint for success. And if you follow it and you get athletes that can contribute to that blueprint, you will have success. And he's proven that. The way he goes about practice, every detail about practice, every detail about getting them read you, every detail about what they're eating, everything that has to do with what they put in their bodies. This man is meticulous about everything football. And um, that's what's been so refreshing for me. It's just to be around him and things that I felt like, oh, yeah, I know that situation. Just to be around him and to watch him interact with our players and to teach them the value of what that group blueprint looks like. It's been amazing. Uh, as far as me uh, becoming a head coach, you know, I don't know. I've been asked that question before about a GM, head coach. Um, do you want to do radio? I still get asked questions about doing radio and TV. And so I don't know right now. I'm just enjoying life. I don't have a whole lot of responsibility, which is cool for me because I get to see Micah play on Friday night. And I get to see my daughter, Aja, play basketball. And I don't miss very much. So, so I need important. To take oh, you know. Basketball. You know where you're going. You know what I always tell you. I know. I won't have to say it on air, but I know. That's there's, what Stan did, There's too. a certain individual that did a similar thing in Baltimore, and now he's the man running the show. And he played the same position as my big brother. Is that uh, Ozzie Newsome? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not saying that. I, hey, you described I, I, him. I just called I, 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 didn't say I didn't say anything. I hey, didn't say anything. Marcus, he's retired now. Marcus Pollard, I, I, we obviously can't thank you enough for your time. We know, despite the fact that you say you're not busy, we know you got a pretty big job over there in Jacksonville, and, and obviously your family time and all that stuff, uh, that is probably the biggest job you have, uh, absolutely. And, and we really appreciate your time here. Big bro, oh, man. I really appreciate oh, oh, yeah. you, man. You, you came through as you home. always yeah. do, man. Thanks, Marcus. Really appreciate you, big bro. Absolutely. You know, C- know, you you know CP watching. You know yeah, mom watching, too. 
Hey, next time we're going to get you on the video, we're going to work out those kinks. That's a nice picture, though. Like, yeah, it's a yeah, very good some, picture. Alex did some good stuff. I mean, that's there. a hell of a picture that's they a, got a, here, Mark. I've been looking at the picture. It looks like one of those where you have like a like a 50th birthday party and you just get captured in the best light ever. Look at that smile. I mean, yeah. my goodness. I that told is, you, the guy belongs on TV. <laughs> that, that is that is a that is a billion-dollar smile right there, man. Marcus Pollard, we'll continue to love you when you're off the air, too. So go, <laughs> go do your thing. And, and we hope we can do do this again soon. We, yeah. we really enjoyed it. I, I look forward to it, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Big bro. It. Love you, man. Appreciate you. NFL great uh, Marcus Pollard. Man, oh, man. 13 seasons in the NFL. Yeah. Um, the amazing race. The amazing Finished race. Finished third with his wife. Do you know with, how hard that sis. is? With baby sis, we had the same exact amount of touchdowns. Like I don't like, and it's just random to me. Like and it, forty, I, I didn't know that. Like randomly one day, I kind of was like, I think this when they were talking about uh, Peyton Manning's, like all mm. where his touchdowns went. I said, Marcus got forty. I got forty. <laughs> Hall of Fame dad yeah. for sure. No I doubt to, about I that. I wanted to ask him if, if he hears Omaha in his dreams. Oh or man, talking about uh, Omaha. <laughs> Peyton. Omaha. <laughs> Uh, all right, red seven, red seven. We're gonna take a break. Come right back. Greatest college quarterback of all time. We are gonna Finally. do that next. This is Armani and Edwards on Woodward Sports Network.